everybody. Welcome back to Making Stuff with Mrs. Brody. I'm Mrs. Brody, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite artists of all time, Jackson Pollock, okay? If you are a current student in our Google Classroom, there is a PowerPoint with some information about him. Please check that out before you watch this video. For those of you that are not my current students, in the description I'll have a link to the Tate website. Um, it's a great little museum, and it's got a really cool article about him and some examples of his artwork, okay? So today I'm going to show you some things that I've done in my own studio that kind of resemble Jackson Pollock paintings, and then I'm going to show you some things you can do at home to create your own Jackson Pollock inspired artwork. Let's get started. All right, my lovelies, this is an example of one of my paintings that I've done that has been very much inspired by Jackson Pollock. So for this painting, what I did was took a bunch of acrylic paint and some of it I added some gel medium to, some I added some water to it to thin it out. So some of it's thick, some of it's thin, some of it's sort of the same consistency you'd expect from acrylic paint. And then I put it into plastic bags, like a sandwich bag or a freezer bag, and I cut off the end and then I squeezed it out and I kind of swirled my hand all over this. And I didn't wait for any of it to dry, I just did it right after each other. So on here, you can see kind of the white background underneath some of the the colors and even the white background's got some texture to it, right? That one I added some gel to so it would hold its shape a little bit. And then you can see some of the paint mixes together, some of it sits on top of the other colors. But this reminds me very much of Jackson Pollock's paintings because there is so much movement going on and there's all these colors and everyone's going to see something a little bit different. And some people might want to hang it so it's nice and horizontal. Some people might turn it so it's vertical. That's the beauty of these awesome abstract, abstract expressionist paintings is you kind of express your own feelings and emotions and um, then anybody that views it can kind of do their own thing. So you guys don't have to use paint when you're at your house you could use other materials. So I have my nice white big drawing paper here. Now I'm an artist, you can see by my table, I have a lot of artwork and a lot of different materials in my studio. So if you only have crayons and markers, you can totally do this project. If all you have is pencils, you can totally do this project. So I'm gonna start out with a nice white piece of paper. If you have graph paper or line paper, totally fine. If all you have is little note cards, I think that'd be really cool to do a Jackson Pollock inspired painting on a really small thing. So the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm being smart. If I used crayon first all over this, we can't color on top of crayon. It's going to ruin our other things because crayons are waxy and then we can't put markers and things on top of it. So I'm going to start with a watercolor and I'm feeling a little bit red today, right? So I'm going to take my watercolor marker. I love these things. They're really cool. And I'm going to use it and go around my paper and just make some swirly lines. Remember, we don't want it to look like anything. We just want it to show our emotions. So if I was like really angry and upset today, maybe I would keep using the red and some dark, dark colors. But for this, I'm just gonna use a bunch of different colors because I'm feeling colorful and light. At my house right now, it's Friday. And we're just gonna have a moment of zen and create some art. So there, step one. I have some red squiggly lines with my watercolor. Now maybe I have some gel pens at home. Okay, look at that, a little sparkly purple. So for this one, maybe I'm gonna change it up and I'm gonna do sort of like these swirly, sparkly, I don't know, circly, ovally scribbles. And I'm gonna do this all over my paper. Now this is your picture, so you don't have to use curvy lines. You could use nice jaggedy, raggedy lines like this. Right? There's no reason why you couldn't use two. Uh-oh, the pen's running out. Oh well, that's okay. We're gonna channel our inner artist and just grab another color. Ooh, all my pens are running out. I put you pens. Maybe if I go a little slower, it will work better. There we go. Blue, my favorite. Ooh, Mrs. Brody needs more gel pens. All right, well, let's say no more gel pens. You guys aren't working. Let's use some colored pencils. Maybe for this, I'm going to use some scribbles instead. Now I know often, my current students, you know I, I don't like scribble monsters, but this is one of those times where you can scribble all you want. You see my camera shaking? That's how I'm scribbling so much. All right, so we got some blue in there. Ooh, let's go bold. Big black Sharpie marker. Look at that, one of those chisely tip ones. So for this one, I think I'm just going to do some lines like this. 
We're not going for perfect. Nothing has to be even. Jackson Pollock, he just dripped and dripped and moved around and did whatever he felt like doing at the time. Now, the beauty of this is, number one, I could hang this up any which way I wanted to because it's abstract. It doesn't look like anything. It's just a bunch of lines and colors in there. I think I need some more watercolor. Let's do, let's try some purple watercolor since our purple pen kind of got messed up a little bit. Ooh, I like that. That's good stuff. So the other thing about this is once I'm all done, and if you've painted, wait for it to dry, you could then take this paper and cut it up and use it in another piece of artwork like I might do in my next video. We shall see. So this also reminds me of the um, illustrator and author, Eric Carle, because he often did these really great sort of scribbly, scraggly, drippy papers that he cut up and then turned into his illustrations, which I thought was really cool. And there we go. I might add some glitter if I had glitter. Mrs. Brody doesn't love glitter, but if I had it, I could put some on there. I could squeeze some glue on there. Just like this. And add some texture to my drawing. Right? How cool does that look? So you can use whatever materials you have at home. You could use just markers. You could use markers and crayons and colored pencils. You could even use paint if you have paint at home. You could do a watercolor across the whole thing and then come back and add another texture, another layer on top of it. Cannot wait to see what you guys do. My current students, make sure that you're uploading those pictures to our Google website or emailing it to me so I can see your amazing artwork. And I hope you guys stay safe, that you stay kind, and you stay creative. And I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.